All right, guys, welcome back to Three Pound Fishing. We're back, beautiful winter day. It's actually kind of cold though, but we're putting big fish in the boat already. We're starting this thing out midday, beautiful fish. We're gonna let him go. But I'm starting off this episode a little different. Gear check, hammer 10, best 10 footer on the market. You guys check it out. There's a limited amount of these left for the next two months and then they've got a brand new shipment coming in. The reel, the three pound fishing reel out of this world matches up beautiful with the hammer tin don't worry we're putting fish in the boat today and then we're rolling now with the new comet the comet from sniping braid you guys check that out it's uh, got the new eight strand technology it's still point one zero get that at sniping braid or three pound fishing all this stuff's available at three pound fishing but that's what we're going to roll with today and we're going to slow up presentation we're going to take the split shot off we're going to we're going to be throwing the small hair jigs so right now we're rolling with this guy right here, getting it done. We're gonna actually use it, it's on a different rod here, let me show you. Um, oh, it's actually up there. We're gonna be rolling with that. Hair jig, slow presentation, the new Comet sniping braid, the hammer 10, the reel, everything guys, puts fish in your boat. Check it out at 3poundfishing.com. Let's get this done. Now, I would say that we have a fickle bite right now on my home lake. I'm positioned on a point. We've got 45 degree water temperatures and we do have a fickle bite. So that's why we take off the split shot. We want these fish to have plenty of time to attack this bait. And if it's running through there too fast, they just simply don't have the time. And so we slow it down as much as possible. Yes, you can try a float, no doubt about it. We have had some success doing a float, but a lot of these fish right now are in the water, or I'm sorry, a lot of these fish right now are in the mud, and those are the ones we're having the most success with. So as you can see right down here, that's where they're at. They're just kind of in the mud, jumping around, and so we just do a slow retrieval right across them, and you know, sometimes it does, you know, sometimes it happens right away, sometimes it takes a couple casts, but for the most part, these guys are eating a little bit better than those ones that are in the school. So I just got through there. Oh baby, and that's all it is. Dragging it across those fish. You can see it's actually grown. This is probably one of the smaller guys we have caught lately. But you get the idea. Dragging it across that top line where they're just very active is a, uh, a good way to get her started. Now, a lot of times I won't see where the bait's at. I think that's a misconception that people really follow where the bait's at 100% of the time when they're on live scope. But reality is once you know your fall rate and you know where kind of where the fish are at, you don't have to necessarily follow it and you're gonna fish based off a of feel the way we used to do it. Come on, buddy. Boom, he hit it. So that's all on feel. Sometimes you catch your bait from time to time, but really the power is the ability to not have to see your bait 100% of the time and just learning the fall rate of your jig. Now we're in shallow water, so I don't have to wait very long for it to get down there. But um, even with a split shot, even when the fish are up there at 12 feet or down there at 12 feet, it's a uh, learning the fall rate is critical where you don't have to necessarily pick up your jig 100%. All right, so the fish are finally demolished my hair jig <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it out and what a better time than a than a loop knot show you guys what's going on so we're gonna get rid of that guy right there this braid is awesome you can definitely feel the quality of the uh, you can feel the different textures so we're gonna go with this guy here he's one that I just came out with. there's the new blue hair jig guys right there the new blue that's available it's awesome it's like a light blue um, we're gonna try it out. Who knows? Who knows, right? We're going with black, which we don't typically do on my home lake, but we, we like to make it experiment to see what works and what doesn't. Our loop knot is right there. Now, the reason why we use a loop knot, there it is, that's a loop knot, is because that gives that bait just that extra flexibility to move nat more naturally and to swim horizontal. So I guess I technically didn't show you the loop knot. I apologize, but that's what it looks like. There's a lot of videos with the loop knot. Maybe we'll do it later in this episode even. Let's do it. 
So you guys know that we do have the Savage 13. That's the full jigging rod. This is the Hammer 10. Um, the Savage 13 has been awesome. You'll be seeing a lot of that in the tournament trails. That's where I use the 13 footer. And of course the, the twitch, the twist on our Savage 13 is that it does have the ability to change into a 15 or a 16 footer. So essentially three rods in one. It's like we'd like to say. Oh my gosh, I missed that guy. Holy moly. All right, well, at least we got a bite on a black tailed jig, so that helps me out. The castability of this braid is fantastic. We're casting a 132nd ounce jig, guys. That's a, that's a small weight to be throwing 30, 40 feet, and we're doing it with the hammer. Just a great combination. There we go. Boy, he just took it. I never watched it, never saw it. It was like a smaller crappie, that's for sure. But still crappie nonetheless. Eh, it's an eater. It's an eater size. That's that new blue right there, guys. And apparently the black works. There it is. Gotta love that, right? Gotta love that. Now we're casting, staying back roughly around 30 feet. We have totally shut down the trolling motor, everything to be as stealthy as possible. Uh, when these fish are spooky guys and you can't get within 30, 40 feet of them, um, you just might as well pick a point and put your po power poles down if you can and uh, just sit here because that's the only way you're gonna get close to them. Now don't get me wrong, you can catch fish the other way too, but uh, when they're spooky, you really need to shut, shut it all down if you can. Big fish. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Going deep, way out there. With a split shot so I can get it out there. We're talking, the throwing is about 55 feet out there to see if we can get some of these fish that are hanging out in this dip. Good sized fish too, guys. Awesomeness. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. So, see this big dip? How these fish right here are stable? So I'm fish, I'm throwing it way out there. To, to accommodate them and I am throwing this thing 60 feet every bit of it I have no idea where my baits at once it hits the screen because they're spanned out so far but you get a feel for your drop your, your drop rate and of course because we have a split shot on I'm pretty familiar with that one and uh, we're just dragging it through there way out there just here guys awesome Oh man, it doesn't get any better than this. This is winter fishing at its finest. Good eating sized fish right there. Getting to sit back and relax and cast on a stump. Oh yeah, good fish here. All right, guys, great episode, great fish. Check out that comment and all those great products at 3poundfishing.com. I'm gonna put fish in the boat just like this guy right here. I'm impressed. I am impressed.